So me and the six samurai archetype, we go way back. Back when I was still little young Nistro, just getting into Yu-Gi-Oh, this set called Storm of Ragnarok came out. Now Storm of Ragnarok introduced a new era to the six samurai archetype. Now six, the six samurai was already a deck before Storm of Ragnarok came out. The Storm of Ragnarok introduced the legendary six samurai with uh, the likes of Kizan, with the likes of legendary six samurai Shien, and a bunch of like interesting support cards that turned the deck from something a little more rigid and a little more control heavy to just this unapologetic combo heavy deck. And I think this was like kind of the first of its kind. I think Six Samurai was like the first really combo heavy, consistent combo heavy deck I think we've had in Yu-Gi-Oh. Feel free to prove me wrong, but I do believe it was Six Samurai who kind of took that mantle. It was just so interesting to look back on that time period for myself because I don't know, Six Samurais just made me obsessed with just Samurais as a whole. I know Six Samurai, the initial Six Samurai are based on like Samurai 7, an old movie from the 1950s, and then the Shogun Shien is based on Nobunaga. And so the legendary Six Samurai are the Six Samurai of the past. So when they were still in like the Warring States period, well, I guess Nobunaga's entire life was in the Warring States period. But yeah, basically Legendary Six Samurai was when he was younger, right? And because I became obsessed with Samurai, you know, I became a little more cultured. I, you know, I became obsessed with like learning about like that time period of Japan system, like a Samurai Warriors kind of way. Now, one of my favorite anime slash gaming series is Sengoku Basara, a series that takes place in the same time period as the Six Samurai. Sure, you know, I did also become the Thing versus Thing Japan guy, basically a, a hardcore weeb, but more of like a historian kind of weeb, not like a weeb who just worshiped everything that Japan spit out, but sort of scholar about the history of Japan in that time period and like how they got from where they were there to where they are now. And it's it's just so much interesting stuff. So Six Samurai has affected so many aspects of my life because not only was my first real serious archetype where, you know, I was no longer just playing like whatever kind of synchros, like I actually had like an archetype that was serious. Um, my first real deck that was like meta relevant, my first deck that was hit by the ban list, because I remember when Gateway got banned and Spoke Signal got limited, that was a really hard day for me. <laughs> and just the amount of time it took for Gateway to even come back to the TCG was just so long compared to the OCG. I've been with Six Samurai for a long time. This deck has had a special place in my heart. And to see more support coming out for a deck like this in 2024 is so interesting because they actually made Max C as a way to counter Six Samurai. The card was designed to counter just the insane amount of summoning that Six Samurai could do so that other decks could keep up to it, right? And so we just got, or we're going to get the Mult Chummy in Infinite Forbidden, which is basically like the new Max C that um, lets you draw every time your opponent summons a monster from hand. And now Six Samurai is getting more support. We got the first Max C, we got the legendary Six Samurai. The secret Six Samurai were kind of ass, so. We, we didn't really need to balance those. But now that we have new Six Samurai support, we have another Maxi adjacent card to go along with it, which I think is just really interesting just to see like how the game is going to change and evolve with Six Samurai being. A few years back, there was this Link 2 for Noble Knights called Isold, and most of you are probably familiar with it by now. If you played Yu-Gi-Oh! within the past year, you, you've probably seen this card used and abused um, numerous times just for... Uh, heavy combos and FTKs and all kinds of degenerate stuff. So it got banned here in TCG, but Isold was the bread and butter for FTKs for a deck like Six Samurai because Six Samurai kind of went under the radar. After their initial ban list, they kind of never really saw like the light of day or the, the light of, of the meta again. They were kind of just around focusing on themselves. And yes, even though the FTK variant was consistent and worked with just any two warriors, including Neo Space Connector, which could rip a card from your opponent's hand, it still wasn't like good enough because Six Samurai still isn't amazing at playing around hand traps, and it's still a kind of like homogenous deck where you need to play a lot of cards dedicated to the archetype for the deck to work. A lot of Six Samurai cards only work with Six Samurai. Like it's not like some other engines like Bestials where you can kind of just use it with like any deck or like, you know, like the Resonator stuff where you can use it with any deck that uses Dark Monsters. Six Samurai needs Six Samurai. That's kind of like where the 
where the balance is, right? Like now that there's a lot more generic outs to things, Six Samurai may have trouble keeping up in a modern format because it can't be as diverse in terms of like hand trap and tech lineups compared to other decks. Also, because Gateway is still at one, right? And we have to make a certain link monster to, to, to search into it. And if the Gateway gets interrupted or if the link monster gets interrupted, it's very likely that we will not have the ability to play the game. Uh, for our turn and in in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! if you can't play your turn It's most you're most likely going to lose if you can't play through hand traps You're probably going to lose to some one card starter Which I should add six samurai here in TCG will no longer have Assuming that Esold is going to stay banned and assuming that MX Saber Invoker is going to stay banned and we'll we'll get a little more into that later What new interesting support did six samurai get? I guess we can start with the legendary Klusha Six Samurai Shien. So uh, Shien in a different era of his lifespan, right? Like, so all the versions of Shien are just the same person in different time periods. So we're just seeing Shien in another period of time. This time he's a little more like he's using his wings. His fire is a little more apparent in his design. It's a little more like chaotic. He has the exact same summoning condition as the original legendary Six Samurai Shien, except he's level six instead of level five. Now, on Synchro Summon, he gets to add any Six Samurai or Shien effect monster from deck or graveyard to hand, which is really important because that means that he can be good follow-up and he can be a, a good starter. It's a really good thing that this card gets to get you more resources because now that Six Samurai here in TCG at least is no longer a one card combo, we're going to need to crutch on a card like this to be able to get started. The Synchro Summon effect is a hard once per turn, but if our opponent activates a monster effect, which is a soft once per turn, we can negate and destroy the monster. Negate the activation and destroy the monster, which is great. I mean, a card that starts our combos and protects us from hand traps, I mean, that's kind of like the most that you can ask for. And because it's a soft once per turn, if you summon multiple or if it leaves the field and then it comes back, it's free. It, it's it's all fair game to negate another card effect. And you know, this is coming in Rage of the Abyss, which for us, we're getting in October, I believe. I really hope this card gets a QCR. Like I'm willing to put down big bucks to get the QCR for this six Samurai stuff, so. And we got another level six Synchro and this one I'm not as happy with because there's just too many things wrong with it. Now. It is a generic synchro, so it can be summoned using any tuner or non-tuners. Warrior monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense during the battle phase, and then you can use each effect once per turn. Uh, if this card is synchro summoned, you can banish any number of six samurai monsters from your graveyard and target that many monsters your opponent controls, return them to the hand. One, it targets. Two, it's on synchro summon and it's not a quick effect. Three, I, I guess I should spoil it now, there is no quick effect synchro summon in Six Samurai. Maybe if you were to play Hoppier Squadron, you could make a Nishi live during your opponent's turn to make that a little more of a threat, but I don't know if we have the space for Hoppier Squadron. We definitely have the ability to dig into it because if you know the Sarayuja Red Blue Samurai loops for the FTK, you know that like drawing is not an issue in this deck, but will you be able to do all that and still set up for potential um, either FTKs or for strong end boards is the question. Its last effect is that if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one of your banished six samurai monsters, which is really cool, right? Because now that means that if we choose to get rid of our Klesha six samurai Shien by banishing it, then that means our Klesha Anishi can actually bring back the banish Shien and that'll make its uh, soft once per turn negation live again, so you can negate another monster effect. Not an amazing card, but the artwork looks really cool, and it has some utility, but it's not perfect. But what is perfect is, I think, these two new main deck monsters. So first we have Anarchist Monk of the Six Samurai, and so if you control a Six Samurai other than Anarchist Monk, you can special summon him from your hand, right? Now he's a hard once per turn summon from hand by that way. So this is going to stray a little differently than a lot of the other six samurai support because he's on Grandmaster, Red Blue Samurai. They all get to summon themselves from hand for free any number of times per turn. It doesn't matter how many times you do it, right? Now, if this card is sent from field to graveyard, you can add one six samurai quick play spell from your deck to your hand, which is really interesting as well. There's a good number of six samurai quick play spells that have not been searchable before or usable before that 
that are now usable. That's actually really good. And then a six samurai monster synchro summoned using this card as material gains this effect. The level of all monsters your opponent controls are reduced by one, which is like hard stopping anything like Sprite, any Exceed deck that's uh, focused on a single level Goblin Biker Sprite, any Synchro deck, this can potentially ruin their lines, but ruin their um, ruin their ability to go for certain Synchros. So I think that's a really interesting pseudo continuous effect to have on a Synchro monster. So if you put that on your Klesha, which is someone that you're going to want to keep on field, your Klesha Shien, then that could be really impactful towards the uh, game state. Now he's a level three tuner, most likely you're gonna use him for your level six synchro. But another tuner that we want to use, which is the instructor of the six samurai. If you control a six samurai other than instructor, you can special summon him from your hand, and he's a hard one per turn summon this way. Now, if this card is sent from field to the graveyard, you can add a six strike card from your deck to your hand, which is also interesting because there are multiple six strike cards that were not searchable before, which are now searchable thanks to instructor. So. A lot more of our engine, our extended engine that was more of tech cards or utility cards is becoming more searchable. And this is actually really amazing because previously a lot of this stuff, you kind of just had to hard draw into it. You either used like United, hopefully hoping that you would draw into it. And there's a lot of like sub archetypes for Six Samurai. There's like Six Styles, Six Strike. There's the Shien monsters. There's a lot of sub archetypes in the Six Samurai deck. So to be able to get more access or deeper access into some of those will make our deck more versatile and able to do more. So Instructor and Anarchist are really solid supports. But there's one more card that is coming in Rage of the Abyss, which is the Six Strike Double Assault. So it's a new Six Strike card, right? And an Instructor can search this card. Now you can apply one of these effects or if you control two or more Six Samurai monsters, you can apply both effects in sequence. The one of two effect is you can summon a six samurai with 2000 or less attack from your hand or graveyard, which is really great for extending your lines, potentially getting follow up, playing through Nibiru, stuff like that. And then the second effect is that you can chain a monster your opponent controls with 2000 or less attack into face down defense, which is also really good because it's a pseudo book of moon. You're going to probably use this card to use the first effect, like just being realistic. This is a heavy combo deck. It's rare that you're gonna resolve double assault to use the second effect of this card. It's not impossible, right? And that's because it has a, another effect. So during your main phase, you can banish this card in your graveyard, then target one six samurai monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. But you cannot use both effects in the same turn. So you can use the effect as, as an extender, just to make it really convenient. If you're going second and you control two six samurais, you could potentially put a problematic monster your opponent controls into face down defense. And it doesn't target either with the face down. And then turn three or turn four, whichever, if this card happens to be in your graveyard, you can recycle six samurai monsters. So you get to keep going and you don't need to use four counters off of gateway. In case you somehow don't FTK and your board gets broken, then double assault will be a really convenient way for you to get started again. Now it does target for the one that you, for the six hammer that you add back to hand. So it could be interacted with if they have a bestial or something, but otherwise it's really good follow-up. It's, it's a good extender and it's good follow-up and it's searchable. So at the very least, I think Six Strike is a one of now. Now that we have our five new six samurai cards, what can this deck do? Let's find out. Here we come to the first combo where it is Instructor plus Anarchist Monk. And it's literally just the two new monsters from R Rage of the Abyss. This is actually going to be really, really great because just these two cards pull off the FTK by themselves. Now in this replay, I'm going to show off the entire FTK. This shit took me like an hour to, <laughs> to like manually input it. So I'm gonna show off the whole thing in this one combo and then in the later combos, when we get to the scenario where we have the ability to FTK, I'm just gonna say cowboy for game, like cowboy loop for game. So I'm gonna normal the instructor and then special summon the anarchist monk, right? And this is a 2.5 card combo because for our battle shogun, which is our exceed monster, we need an extra card in hand to discard. So really you're using three cards from hand, but you only need to have the instructor and the anarchist in this line. So we're using our Battle Shogun here and Battle Shogun will trigger on top of both Instructor and Anarchist Monk, triggering all three at the same time, meaning A, we are protected from Ash Blossom 
and we do pretty well against roll because searching three cards in the same chain link is like pretty significant so anarchist monk which we did at chain link three is going to get us asceticism asceticism is a really classic six samurai card that i think fell out of favor once the ftk stuff started but in the stormer ragnarok days this was one of the best cards for the deck because it had the ability to get you, I guess once Extreme Victory came out, Elder into Kagamusha, which was a free way into Legendary Six Samurai Shien. Now it's gonna have an even more interesting use in the deck. Anarchist Monk searches Asceticism, Instructor's gonna search Double Assault, and Battle Shogun gets to search Gateway. So frame one, we're gonna activate the Gateway, and then we're gonna activate the Asceticism to target our Battle Shogun and summon a monster with the same attack from our deck. There is no other 6 Samurai with 1,000 attack than Yuriza. So Yuriza is going to be our target to summon here, and we're going to summon it under one of Battle Shogun's Link Arrows, because every time a 6 Samurai is summoned to one of his Link Arrows, he gets a Bushido counter, and he gains 100 for each Bushido counter on the field. And that's going to come up in some of the later combos as well. But for now, because he starts with 1,000 base, we get to use asceticism target him and then bring out Yuriza from deck so now we are at three counters and that's not even counting the fact that we have the double assault here and double assault will be able to grab us uh our anarchist monk from the graveyard now anarchist monk will be summoned to battle shogun's other link arrow meaning battle shogun will have two counters gateway will have four and we're not even done here because we get to synchro summon into our legendary clutch of six samurai shien now we are hand trap protected right any any hand traps that they might have been holding or monster effects they might have been holding we now have the ability to negate on top of the fact that we now have six counters on gateway and we have three counters on battle shogun we're gonna go for uh the clutch is gonna search, search us the shinai and uh i'm gonna use the gateway here to add back the instructor right because we normal summon instructor and we special summon out the Anarchist, meaning Instructor still has not used its summoning condition. And that's gonna be really important for the longer combo lines of this deck, right? We drew, we normal summon the Instructor, we send it to Graveyard, used, uh, used effective Instructor in Graveyard, and then we returned Instructor to hand. We never special summon him with its own effect, and that's going to be really important because now that we have Instructor in hand, we will be able to special summon it for free. And now we get an extra counter on Battle Shogun, an extra counter on Gateway. We're going to remove the two from Battle Shogun, and we're going to search a Kizon. And now we get to summon out Kizon, and we're going to link into another Battle Shogun here. We really don't have to do this. We also could have synchroed into another Klesha to get more um, counters on Battle Shogun plus um, more counters on Gateway. But I did like getting this second Battle Shogun while we're still earlier on in the turn before we start going into Sariusha just so we can build up more Bushido counters. So now Gateway has six counters. We're going to resolve Gateway twice and get double keys on. We're going to summon one, right? And now we, we gain two more counters plus one. Go into Klesha. We're going to summon two. We're going to summon three, right? After summon three, we're going to add a keys on back to hand. We're going to summon keys on and then we're going to go for Shadow of the Six Samurai Shien. If you guys remember, there was actually a six samurai structure deck around like early Zexal era, and this was the one new card from that structure deck. It's a decent boss monster. It doesn't really do much, but it's been around, and we might as well abuse the fact that we can gain more counters by summoning it. It also is a Shien monster, which doesn't come up much, but there is some cool things we can do with Shien monsters in Gateway that like we can't do with regular six samurai monsters so that's really like the benefit of playing this card this is like the only six samurai that is both a shien and a six samurai because you know the shien in the synchro shiens are like separated by their name whereas like this one is like you know shien all right so now we're gonna start um going into the more uh combo heavy part now the reason why we want to go Shadow plus Grandmaster plus Kizon plus Battle Shogun is because for Sarayuja to get its draw four effect, we need four different monsters. And even though Battle Shogun is a link two, we could still make Sarayuja with three, but we're choosing to use four simply for the convenience. So now we go for uh, Sarayuja and look at what we got. We got the Shien's Dojo. Now, if you have Sarayuja, Shien's Dojo, and 
if you have six or more counters on gateway, you basically have the ability to FTK from there. That's basically the scenario that you can prove to your opponent that you can FTK. Um, and you need at least three slots open uh, to, to pull off the blue, red, blue combo. But yeah, so Sarayuja, at least six at least six Bushido counters between Gateway and whatever card. So if we started out with Dojo, we'd still be fine. And we wouldn't have even needed to use the Dojo here and Gateway. So now we can use Sarayuja, special summon out the Shinai. And uh, then we're gonna use Gateway, search out the Mizuho. We're gonna use, uh, we're just gonna double Gateway here. Just get the Mizuho and the Shinai. And so we get to special summon out both of them, right? You have to summon out Mizuho first because Shinai needs Mizuho on field to summon itself. So Mizuho gets to summon itself and then Shinai gets to summon itself and then you're back to a bunch of counters on Gateway and Dojo. Now we're gonna use Mizuho to tribute Shinai to target any card on the field and destroy it. And she can target herself. And that's really important because by targeting herself, she can pop herself before Shinai triggers in Graveyard. When Shinai is tributed on field, it gets to target any six samurai monster in our graveyard and add it back to hand. Meaning we get to add back the Mizuho and Mizuho gets to summon herself. And then um, as we summon her, we're getting counters on gateway, meaning we get to uh, remove four and add our Shinai. And then we get to summon our Shinai. And now that we've gotten to the exact same place that we were before we resolved Mizuho, we basically have an endless loop to gain counters on Shien's Dojo. Now, the reason you need a second card that places Bushido counters for this is because for Gateway by itself, this is a net zero, right? Because you're summoning two monsters, which is four counters, but then you have to pay four counters to add back the Shinai when everything's done, right? So you add back the Mizuho for free, but then you uh, add back the Shinai by paying four counters, which means you're spending four counters and you're getting four counters for each loop that you do. But if you have any other card that places Bushido counters, and this could be Dojo, United, or even Temple of the Six, or even Battle Shogun, shit, you could then gain more counters on the other card that you're using, right? So Dojo will still keep on gaining counters as we're doing this line, meaning that Gateway, although it may be going only it may not be gaining any counters for each rotation, Shien's Dojo will. Or we could have it where we're using two of the counters from Shien's Dojo for, for each two summons, meaning that Gateway is gaining two counters for each loop that you do. Either way, you're getting two counters for each loop, and you can loop this an infinite number of times, however many times that you want. If you are at an official, uh, you know, regional, or e even locals, or like any, any official Yu-Gi-Oh event, right? At this point, you basically show your opponent the loop and you're like, I can keep doing this for as long as I want. So I'm going to do this X number of times until I have X number of counters on either Shein's Dojo or the Gateway. And that is a legal thing that you can do. You can tell them like, hey, I've just done this this many times. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep doing it. So in practicality, you basically can do this until you have an infinite number of counters, right? Or you can just shout out some like absurd number, like, hey, I'm going to commit this action 700 times so that I can gain 1400 counters on my two cards, right? Because your opponent wouldn't really have the ability to do anything, right? Like if, if they cannot interact, right? with your board state, you can basically just keep going until you're done. So it's just much easier for everyone if you tell them like, hey, I'm gonna keep doing this until I have just like a thousand counters. And so by saying such a high number, you also cover the possibility of running out of counters once we go through uh, the rest of the FTK, because that is a possibility, I think, if you don't have enough counters on it. But basically you have infinite counters. As long as Gateway and Dojo are, are, are on the field, you no longer have to worry about how many counters you have on Gateway or Dojo because you basically have an unlimited amount. So we're going to search for all three Kizons and our Fuma, right? Now that we have basically, that's why I took the counters off of these two cards because now we basically have an unlimited amount of counters on these guys. Um, so, I'm gonna use the Mizuho Shinai thing again, and then I'm gonna bring them back 
which I mean, I, I really didn't have to. I, I just I just wanted to show you that like you can still keep doing the loop if you wanted to. You could also if going second, you could also clear the opponent's board doing that, which is really amazing. And now we get to this point right now. I do think that if you're going to do this, you should use the Klesha. Like if one of your Kleshas ha has activated this turn, like the one that like, like if you needed to use it to negate a monster effect, that's the one that you should link off. If you haven't used either Klesha, I don't know if I can recommend linking it off, but you do need to have one Shinai on field plus the three zones. So basically having two Klesha while you're doing the FTK is not possible, but if you have, uh, but as long as you have Shinai plus three open zones, you'll be all right. So this, this second Saryuja, once you already have like the unlimited gateway, basically you don't need to keep resolving its effect. As a matter of fact, it may be a detriment to you if you use its effect every time that you summon it, the, uh, the, the four counter effect. So we're going to stop doing that because we don't want to deck ourselves out. And there's going to be a good reason for that. So we drew United. So basically we have unlimited gateway anyway, but you know, we're, we're, we're not going to need United. We're, we're just activating it just cause so. Sariuja gets to special summon out the Fuma from hand, right? Now this is a new Sariuja. The first Sariuja summon out Shinai. This one's going to summon out Fuma. And this is going to be imperative to your ability to FTK your opponent. We're going to use Gateway here to get Mizuho. I, I set the Gateway by accident because the set and the declare buttons are like right next to each other. Anyway, so using Fuma a Mizuho and a Kizon, which I guess you could keep Mizuho on field too if you want to keep Mizuho instead of Shinai. But yeah, we get to go into Cyframe Lord Omega. And the Synchro Summon is one of the most crucial parts of this FTK because the Synchro Summon allows you to recycle the card that recycles everything else. So now we're going to overlay into, uh, we're going to get our two Kizons and we're going to overlay into Cowboy. Now look at how long it took us to get all to this cowboy and we're only going to inflict 800, right? So that's cowboy number one. So from this point, we're gonna link off the cowboy and the Sarayuja to make any link to monster. It doesn't even like the link arrows don't matter. Nothing matters other than the fact that it is a link to that could be made off of Sarayuja plus anything else or basically just any two monsters that you're using at any point in this loop so sp little knight there are, there is also the codebreaker virus swordsman the link to that also works pit knight early i believe also works so it doesn't have to be sp but sp is the most convenient right so now we're going to get our gateways double keys on and we're going to overlay into the die gusto emerald and so die gusto emerald here there's so there's four cards in rotation that you really want to be crucial about, right? So there's Sarayuja, Cowboy, <clears throat> Sarayuja, Cowboy, the second Sarayuja, and the SP Little Knight. So now we get to add back Cowboy, Sarayuja, and Sarayuja. And we're supposed to draw a card every single time that we do that. Now, simple math here. Cowboy inflicts 800. And every time that you recycle Cowboy, you're going to be using a Digustal Emerald to, re to shuffle that Cowboy back into the extra deck. So if you do not have more than 10 cards in deck, or nine actually, because you can, you can kind of like cheat the last one. Not really cheat, but like we'll get there when we get there. Basically, you, you need to have at least nine cards in deck to resolve this. And that's why I'm saying you really shouldn't use Sarayuja's effect every time that you summon it if you already have the full loop. Because once you have the full loop, now the amount of cards in your deck do can actually come up if uh, if possible. So yeah, uh, we used Daigoso Emerald here. We're supposed to draw a card. I forgot to because I'm doing this large ass FTK. But yeah, you draw a card every time you use Emerald's effect. You're going to have like 20 cards in hand. Well, not 20, like 10, 11, 12 cards in hand by the time you're done with this FTK. And that's assuming that your opponent even like wants you to play it out. So we're going to keep going, right? So add back a keys on. We're going to link four into Sarayuja. I do the effect again. You don't have to. I really just did it for fun, right? So add back keys on, add back keys on, add back Fuma, add back Mizuho. 
as long as you are adding back Fuma, Kizan, and Mizuho, that's all you need to do. Just keep adding back these three. And then once you Synchro Summon, you go for the Kizans again. So we're going to go for Omega. Put back the Daigusto Emerald. And this is like... Di well, Daigusto Emerald is limited. Now, I, I was going to say that Daigusto Emerald is limited. So because it's at one, you actually can't use a second Daigusto Emerald. You have to use Omega to make it happen. So that being said, this FTK is kind of bullshit. But... It can be balanced pretty easily. Either you limit Seriusia, or you uh, ban Omega, or you ban uh, Emerald, or you ban Gateway, which I don't think they would do, but I mean, it's possible. You could also limit Kizan. There's a lot of ways you can go about balancing this stuff. But yeah, I think banning Omega would be the best option, but that's just, that's neither here nor there. As long as it's around, we're gonna get our cowboy. So that's cowboy number two, right? Look at the amount of activations you have to do between cowboy one and cowboy two, right? Like gateway, 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 Omega, Seriusia, gateway, 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 uh, Daiga Emerald, right? And you basically always need to link off uh, Omega plus Emerald. You may link off the, um, you may have to link off the Cyphering Lord Omega early, but that's fine because of the link two. Basically, the link two will uh, counterbalance the fact that you're linking off Omega early because you can always link off the Emerald plus the Seriusia as well. So now, I guess the Emerald, shuffle back, Cowboy, SP, and Seriusia, draw one, right? So, Gateway. Uh, before we link off. Oh, I was going to say, before we link off the Seriusia, we should use this effect to special summon. But uh, I guess I forgot. But never punished, right? Like, this FTK, it, it, it seems complicated, but there is room for mistakes. There's a lot of room for mistakes just because Gateway just makes it too easy. Like, Gateway plus Emerald just makes it too easy. The only thing you really have to keep track of is if you're making a mistake, always keep Omega and Emerald in your graveyard at the same time. Like, just as long as you can get to Omega and Emerald being in your graveyard and you're not playing into getting rid of your link two, then you should be fine. But yeah, uh, special, you go for Omega, add back our double keys on, Cowboy, there goes Cowboy number three. We've inflicted 2,400 by this point. Um, and yeah, uh, just keep the Cowboy and keys on on the field here. I'm just linking off into SP. Um, Because I, I believe I didn't have the second Seriuja here, right? Yeah. I didn't have the second Seriuja here, so I just linked off into SP, overlaid into, into Digusto. Um, yeah, and so I I was supposed to use Cowboy instead of the Cyframe Lord o o Omega here, because if I would have used Omega, I would have had to shuffle back Omega into the deck with Emeralds effect. But by doing it this way, right, now we have the the Cowboy, the Skull Dread, and, and the, the Cowboy and Double Skull Dread to shuffle back for Digusto Emerald. And then we can instantly link off these three or four. I mean, I really did not need to summon keys on there, but you can link off those three to go into Seriusia. And then we can use Omega's effect in graveyard to shuffle back the Dagusto Emerald. Now we can add back the Fuma, add back the Misaho. And th this is just going to keep going. So <laughs> if you're bored or you don't care about the FTK, right? This is, you, you can just, you know, you guys can see the timestamp skip over to the next section. I'm just going to let this play out, right? Because by this point, you guys kind of get it, but. Yeah. Cowboy. That's Cowboy number five. We're halfway there. I added back Grandmaster this time just to be quirky. Went for uh, Seriusia. Yeah, and I even wrote here you don't need Grandmaster if you're not going to use the Seri Seri Seriusia for material effect. Summon out Fuma. 
Mizuho, Kizan, Omega. And this is all because we're getting like, because we had unlimited counters on, basically on Gateway. We can just keep going. There's, there's no limit to how much we can do. If they have over 8,000, we're just, we can just loop Cowboy for <laughs> more than, more than that many amount of times. It's, it's too easy. Right, Omega, there we go. There goes Cowboy, this Cowboy number six. Link off into SP. Digusto, shuffle back Seriusia, Cowboy Seriusia. Draw one, which I was supposed to be drawing the entire time. Basically for each Cowboy we did, I was supposed to draw, so I think I was supposed to be like 18 cards in deck at this point. Yep, put, put back Omega, put back Emerald, summon, 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 boom. Keys on, keys on, cowboy number seven. Three more to go. Again, you don't need to summon that second keys on there. You could have just linked off. Actually, no, no, you do, because you needed four monsters for that one. Uh, Emerald, Skull Dread, Cowboy, SP or your link to, it doesn't have to be SP. At that point, um, I didn't use the Sarija summon effect, but I didn't want to waste it, so I just preemptively summoned out the Fuma, go into Mizuho, go into Kizan, Omega, and now we're gonna get the Emerald. I mean, Cow oh shit, we got Cowboy number eight, nice. Okay, so Sarija here. Gateway add back the Fuma, Gateway add back Kizon, Gateway add back Kizon, Gateway add back... Oh. I guess I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah, it, it's kind of freeform. Uh, I, I think Omega's still in Grave, actually. That's that's why I did it that way. Uh, so, summon out Mizuho, summon out Kizon. And then put Omega back into extra, and then synchro out the Omega, because I put the materials in Grave before I synchroed. You know, just just so you guys don't catch like minor infractions, right? So this is the very last one, right? So we did Cowboy nine times. So as you see, I just use Omega to put back the Cowboy, right? Instead of going through the whole process of summoning out Digusto Emerald, do da, da da da, I just did Omega Cowboy, double Gateway, double Keys on, and then that is going to be the last Cowboy right there, right? So the so on the tenth Cowboy, you know, you can just leisurely do uh omega to put back the cowboy instead of needing to uh wait until you get into a digusto armor to do it so yeah that is cowboy for game and that is the entire ftk i don't know how long that took in video time but uh, I, I guess I'll put a timestamp, you know, it, it probably took like 10 or 15 minutes to put, to show that entire thing. So that's why, that's what I'm saying. It's like, once you know that you have the red, blue samurai plus like gateway and one other card with that places Bushido counters, as long as you're smart about it, you can keep going. I guess battle Shogun wouldn't count. I guess it has to be one other spell that takes Bushido counters, but same difference, right? What if you wanted to take this FTK to the next level, right? We got to Klesha on summon number six in the last combo. Meaning that if our opponent's smart enough, they could hit us on, num on summon number five with a Nibiru. Well, let me just say that uh, that may not actually be the end of the combo line. So if we open up the these three particular cards, right? Dojo, Monk, and Instructor. It may not have to be these three specifically but i think it may also have to be these three specifically i'm not too sure right i'm still testing but let's just say the exact same combo line with with dojo already in hand or being able to be pulled off off your seriusia we're going into battle shogun which is summon number three right we're getting both our effects asceticism and double assault in gateway actually hold hold on to dojo because i just realized Battle Shogun would be a 1300 here. Uh, so hold off on the dojo if you have dojo. Asceticism, double assault, gateway, right? 
So now activate gateway, activate asceticism, target uh, the battle shogun. Go for Ureza, and now we're going for a double salt to summon out the anarchist monk. So we've just hit what you call in the game a choke point. This is the choke point of this FTK, or this is the biggest choke point, I think, of, of the FTK. Because we can get hit by Nib, we can get hit by a lot of stuff here. What if we were to be hit by a Nibiru at this point? Token would get its stats. We go for Link Spider. And just because we're saucy, we're gonna hit up <laughs> the Chamberlain of the Six Samurai, and then we're gonna get uh, our counters off of Gateway. And then now, because we we had enough counters on Gateway, we can go for another Anarchist Munch, uh, Monk, which this time we normal summon out the Anarchist Monk, right? Yeah, we normal summon out our Anarchist Monk in this line. So if you want to play through through the Nibiru, you normal summon out the Anarchist Monk. If you suspect they have Nibiru in hand and you have no other way to, to, to go about playing through it, and now we get to go for Klesha, and because of Klesha, we get to go for Shinai, or Kizan, excuse me. And then we get to use our gateway to go for one more Kizan. So we go for, uh, and this is actually really important, right? So we go, we link off the Link Spider plus Kizan into SP, and then we link off the SP plus Kizan into uh, Battle Shogun. And we have to do it that way because Battle Shogun requires two warriors and one at least one being a six samurai. So that allows us to get um, a lot of counters on our gateway. And now we can start our keys on loops here. Go into Xi'an, go into keys on, go into Grandmaster, link off into Saryuja. You draw your four, you know, hopefully you get into Shinai. If you don't, you, are, you still have Dojo, you still have gateway and you'll be perfectly fine, right? Because Saryuja is summoning out the Shinai. And I'm sure this looks very familiar, right? This is basically full FTK right here through a Nibiru, thanks to this new support. So that's actually really epic. I don't know if that was possible before, but now it's more than possible. I guess it, it was less possible before because Battle Shogun was later on in your combo, right? Like if you want Neo Space Connector into Esold, Battle Shogun wasn't being summoned until summon number five. So you will you wouldn't have any counters on Gateway. Whereas now, because you would have counters on Gateway before you get Nibiru'd, you you can search the Chamberlain, Link Spider, summon out the Chamberlain. And you should have enough counters on Gateway to search both Kizon and another extender. Uh, because it should have six counters by that point on the summon or before before you search Chamberlain it should have six summoning Chamberlain is going to put it back back up to four and then yeah you're going to get one more search and then uh, assuming that you open Dojo as well right Dojo's gaining counters throughout that whole time um, you would have gained the two counters to get the extra search off of gateway so this should work against the Nibiru so Nibiru does not stop the FTK if we open Monk plus Monk plus Anarchist plus a card that places Bushido counters. It could be Six Samurai United as well, or it doesn't matter if it's United or Dojo, as long as it's one of the two. It's just every time, every time you get two summons on United, you have to use Gateway and take away those two counters from United. Just remember to sequence it like that, just so that you're not wasting potential Bushido counters. Right, so summon, boom, summon, right. I think I type it right here. Yep, cowboy loop for game. So now I kind of want to explore, right? What if we, what if instead of going for Battle Shogun first, we actually have the line to go for Klesha first? And I know you guys are getting tired of like the FTK stuff, so. No more FTK, right? Th this is not going to be FTK. This is going to be multi-negate, multi-interaction board, um, starting with Klesha. So now we got Dojo. 
And we're going to get two counters on our dojo. We're going to get three off of Klesha Summon. And now Klesha is going to be able to search us any other six samurai from our deck. Not Gateway. I wish it was Gateway. Uh, so we're going to trigger Instructor, Chainlink. So Klesha, Chainlink 1, Instructor, Chainlink 2. Uh, that, that's why I did it like that, just so you can see that uh, Klesha will get um, chain blocked so that you can have the potential to search more follow up. So now we get to go for Anarchist Monk. Anarchist Monk's gonna put us at four. Uh, and then we're gonna use our six strike double assault, which is gonna put us at five. And then we're gonna go for Battle Shogun here, which is gonna put us at six. Now we should be at six counters, but that won't matter. Uh, Anarchist Monk is gonna search us for asceticism and it's gonna chain block Battle Shogun, which searches us for gateway, right? Now, always remember you're using another card from hand when you're searching with Battle Shogun. I just don't have it here but yes you do use another card in hand so any it's really a 3.5 card combo but as long as you can open those three cards you should be all right so now we have gateway plus asceticism we get to go gateway asceticism target the battle shogun now it should have 1600 here instead of 15 so at this point you would be able to search the mizuho instead of the shinai which is perfectly fine because that still works but just know that in this scenario, it's supposed to have 16 instead of 1500. So that was just a miscalculation on my part. But now we have to go for gateway, go into our um, instructor, and then we can synchro into the OG six samurai Shien, right? So if we've already uh, set up the Klesha, we don't need to normal summon out um, Anarchist Monk. We could, because instructor was normal summoned. Now instructor, hasn't used its summon from hand effect yet, meaning now we get to use it to get a Sheen, which could potentially protect us from, I don't know, Typhoon? <laughs> I don't know, like, we don't have Omnis in this deck, but the, the now we have two live negates, one for spells and traps and one for monsters. Now we get to use Gateway here. Keys on, Gateway again. Keys on, Shadow Sheen. Uh, go for Grandmaster. And uh, Battle Shogun should have had two there, so you're so you're removing two from Battle Shogun, two from Gateway to get Grandmaster. And we're going into another Battle Shogun. I don't think you needed to go for this one, but it's definitely optional. And now we're going to link three into Seriuja, just to make Seriuja uh, live to summon from hand. And red blue, right? Red blue combo. You know what this means? infinite counters so now we no longer counters are now a trivial matter now that being said i do still count the counters on gateway in case you i don't know just don't feel like telling your opponent that you did an infinite loop or something or like uh, if you're on um like edo pro and it's not giving you enough time to like do like a loop for like five or six minutes and then keep playing here's what you do you go for Kizon, Grandmaster, link all four into Apo, add back the Kizon, add back Grandmaster, add back the Kizon, add back Battle Shogun. We're gonna link three. I mean, we're gonna summon three, link into Battle Shogun again. We're gonna summon, go into Seriuja, and go into Grandmaster. And we actually used the dojo here. We used the dojo to summon out the Fuma from deck so that we can make a second Klesha. And then we're gonna use Gateway one more time. Keys on, SP Little Knight. And now we have six monster effect negations on field, one spell trap negate, and one SP Little Knight for the price of three cards. I mean, this is a pretty insane board, right? I mean, you may wanna have like some hand traps or something with this. Uh, we drew a few cards along the way. Like, you could have drawn cards off of Seriusha um, at some point, I believe. And you could have potentially stacked your hand with more hand traps if you didn't have them. I think at this point, you would have two cards in hand because you would use three for the combo, one for Battle Shogun. You'd have one card left, and then you'd draw four off of Seriusha, put back three, which means you'd be at five and then you put back three which means you'd be at two cards in hand so hopefully whatever those two cards are are pretty significant hand traps but you don't lose to evenly you don't even lose to like super poly here because they can't super poly away the uh the apo maybe like 
and they can't super poly into evenly like they can't do both because um if they super poly then they don't then they have a monster on field and they can't evenly match you so really good stuff here really good stuff a pretty hard board to break i guess it, it loses the dark ruler sure I, I i can concede that point and i was thinking about it i was like maybe there's a way to get um the angelic ring as a line for this deck because going for infernoble when you're doing red blue combo seems very possible and i'm not too sure how it would happen but i know it's possible so i'm gonna keep my mind open about that like maybe instead of going for the uh og Xi'an, we go for the angelica synchro uh go into museum search uh chevalier bradmonte and yeah we just need to get one monster equipped to any one of our monsters and then we can equip the angelic ring to it which i'm just saying if you don't feel like playing ftk you may have the extra deck or the main deck space to do that or both actually so now i wanted to get even more creative because i'm like well that's all well and dandy right um, it seems like we figured out a decent way, a, a decently consistent way to make some of these lines happen, even through hand traps and through potential interruptions. So what can we do now? So what what is like our ceiling in terms of like other than an FTK? What is our ceiling otherwise? So we're gonna start the exact same way. Klesha, Anarchist, Double Strike, Anarchist, Double Strike. Battle Shogun, at this point, Battle Shogun does have 1600, right? As I've said last time. And normally, Red Blue Samurai is a really good way to go about it, but there is another option, which is uh, Hatsune Miku. I, I know that's not its name, but the, the very first Secret Six Samurai in the entire video. All you morons who bought these cards out before even knowing how good they were in the deck, I'm sorry, dude. It's like when people bought out Genix Ally Axel when the Genix support got announced. And then I'm like, dude, Axel does shit for the deck. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> because there's only like w one decent machine tuner that's a Genix. The rest of them are all like fucking spellcaster and all these different weird types. Like, most of the Genix stuff is not machine, so it didn't make sense to buy out Axel. And now Baron's Band, Axel's even worse. And it's getting a reprint in the Battles of Legend, which is, like, hilarious, I guess. Because the card doesn't do anything. So, Hatsume is the good one. The rest of the Secret Six Samurais are ass. The only way that Kizaru will be helpful is if Kizaru... Uh, is if MX Saber Invoker comes back. That's the only way Kizaru will be helpful. Um, when you go for searching uh, Anarchist... So, when you go for Klesha plus instructor search you could search kizaru plus double assault here's the issue let's say you summon kizaru off of double assault you control klesha which is a dark monster and you control kizaru which is an earth monster what six samurai are you searching that is extending you past that point because you can't search anarchist you can't search instructor you can't search kizan it's there there's nothing that Kizaru can do in that scenario. It's worthless. The card's just terrible. Like it does not help you get to your end to your end goal at all, unless you're summoning off of like Sarayuja or something to then search like Hatsume. But even then, that's just win more. Because if you can get to the point where you have Sarayuja, you probably can just FTK. So you don't need to go for Kizaru. So Kizaru is not relevant towards any of our lines. It's not uh, convenient with asceticism or anything of that nature um, we'd have to search it meaning like instead of searching a, a, a real extender like Monk or Kizan we're searching Kizaru and then we have to we'd have to waste like a Sarayuja summon or a double so, or, or a six strike on it which just isn't good so Kizaru's ass I'm, I'm sorry to everyone who spent like fucking 30 bucks on the card you, you can put all your copies back on TCG Player now. Now, I'm not the subject matter expert on Six Samurai, but like, 
I know you people didn't play test it before you bought out that stuff. I, I just know it because there's no way you would l practice these lines and say, oh yeah, Kizaru is a staple. No way. Right? Like, especially when like a lot of these combos require you to start with like three cards potentially. Like that's a big ask, right? Even with Smoke Signal and Rota and you know, the consistency cards for six samurai, that's still something of a big ask. I think it's like, we, we can get more into numbers later, but I don't know. The deck feel like, I don't think the deck's gonna be meta on release. It's gonna be a really fun deck to play. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, Hatsune Miku. So what she does is that she can banish two six samurais from your grave or face a field. Target a six samurai in grave and then summon it from grave. This was really good off of Isold because this allowed you to um, extend, or um, if you just wanted to link it off just to go into Battle Shogun right away, you could do that too. So there's a lot of uh, potential, a lot of opportunity with a card like Hatsume for like extending. So now we get to go for our gateway, summon Kizan, summon, go for Xi'an. Detach the two from Shogun. Go for Grandmaster. Go for Kizan. And look, at this point we have Sarajia. We really, we really don't need Hatsume here. But I did want to try something out. I was a little curious how this would go, and I think I like the results. Oop. So we're gonna go for Kizan. We're gonna make the Anishi Synchro here. We're gonna make the Anishi Synchro, and then we're gonna use Hatsume to banish Shogun plus the Klesha we had face up on field. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I'm just assuming that they negated something with, that we negated something with Klesha, right? Like once you negate something with Klesha, that's when you can use Hatsume, banish Klesha, banish Battle Shogun, uh, summon out Instructor, Instructor plus uh, Hatsume makes Shien. And then now you have this Anishi We can go like smoke signal, Sarajia summon, right? Use our counters, get Mizuho. Use our counters, get Shinai. Link off into an Appaloosa, for, a Fornigate Appaloosa. Then we get Anishi here. Anishi gets to go for our Shien. Go for Mizuho. Go for Shinai. Go for Kizan. And now we're going to use Shien's Dojo to summon the Shien Squire. Now, back in the day, this used to be the bona fide target for um, Shien's Dojo. So before the Secret Six Samurai existed, which was a really crucial step for allowing us to make FTKs, the original two card combo off of Dojo was like to use Shien Squire. And the, the kind of trade off was like, oh, well, if you draw it, it's not a terrible hand trap to protect your six samurai from battle that turn but if you don't draw it then you get to use dojo to summon it from deck to make a shien for free basically so it was pretty well balanced and now we get to make nature beast and now nature beast is like a little stronger than shien because now you can save your shien for situations that are a little more relevant and now we get to detach six counters from our gateway of the six and summon back our shadow of the six samurai shien and I, as i said earlier uh, the Shien summon was going to come up, and there it is. So now we have Shien, Nechuria Beast, Appaloosa, SP, and then Klesha, which is uh, endless number of spell negates. Uh, so four, five, six, let's just call it seven negates plus an SP, basically, um, off of three cards. Which, yes, off of three cards, that's a big ask, but you get really rewarded for it. Uh, there's probably better boards that you can make, but this is retaining all of the stuff that does the FTK in our extra deck. There is there is nothing, like, other than um, Anishi here, which you really don't have to play at all. Like, this is a flex spot. Like, this is the ultimate flex spot. And Nature Beast, which is, you don't have to play flex spot. Squire, you don't have to play flex spot, and we're gonna get more into the deck list in a minute here. But yes, about seven negates, um, including beasts, 
insane ability just to stop every spell card in the game uh, that isn't Super Poly or Dark Ruler. Again, we do lose a Dark Ruler, that's fine, right? I, I think I think that's fair, right, losing the Dark Ruler here. But uh, it's also not like the end of the world because there are, there are ways to play around Dark Ruler, so. Yeah, I mean, those are the Bombos for now. This is just day one testing for Nistro. I spent like all day yesterday figuring out this stuff because pulling off these FTKs, it takes a lot out of you. And uh, thankfully you're allowed to make mistakes on, du on Dueling Book. If I was testing this on fucking um, EDO Pro, it would take me even longer, but yeah. So this is the deck profile that I'm using for this combo. So three Monk, three Instructor, three Keys on, one Grandmaster, one Gateway, three Dojo, three United, three Smoke Signal, one Rota, double Shinai, one Mizuho, right? These are staples. Fuma, staple for the FTK. Kageki is really kind of a flex spot. You really don't have to play him. Uh, one, one Double Assault, one Asceticism, and then we have our cross out targets and are uh, called by, which is about like 10 slots for non-engine. Even using this full combo, using the full FTK, we still have 10 slots for non-engine. Uh, we do have Yuriza here as a uh, soft brick. We have Chamberlain as a soft brick. And we have Kageki, just because I wanted another card to count towards like the combo count without like, because like Six Samurai really doesn't have a normal summon other than Kageki. Like Kageki is the best normal summon the deck has. And I'd rather like bait an interruption through this than like not at all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, now that we're here, right? Uh, instructor searches the six strike cards. Our other two six strike spells or traps is Thunder Blast, which is one that I was really considering because um, if, if you want to step away from the FTK side of things, the ability to like bounce cards or pop monsters your opponent controls for the cost of one Bushido counter seems really good. It just, the fact that it requires a Bushido counter is kind of tough, but I think you can pull it off because it's searchable. The second is Triple Impact, which is a pseudo lightning storm for the deck, where if you control three or more six Samurais, then you can either destroy a face of monsters, all face of spells and traps, or all set spells and traps. It could be a decent card to run in the deck, but I don't think it's necessary. And the fact that we need to open so many six samurais means we we kind of have to hold off on playing like bricky or more out there kind of cards. And I think Lightning Storm is just better. A little outdated, but not a terrible card since it's searchable. So for Anarchist Monk, if you already have the asceticism, then there's also cunning and secret skills of the six samurai. Both of which I'm a little sad because they send to the graveyard and they don't destroy the monster. If they destroy the monster, then using this with Fuma would be really easy. Because then you could like pop Fuma, summon one from Grave or summon one from Banished. And then Fuma could trigger to summon you another six samurai. That could have been decent, but the fact these send means that these are not as useful as I think that they could have been. I do believe that because it sends, then it targets. If you wanted to use this with Klesha to basically turn back on its uh, negation, you could, if you wanted to get like a double monster negate off of it, but I don't know, using a search for that is like, eh. But next we have uh, Axel Synchron Dissipator. These are, you, you could play these very easily, right? Like you have a level two tuner in deck, level eight synchro is not hard to pull off, right? Like if you don't feel like playing FTK, level eight synchro is not hard to pull off with Fuma, Mizuho, and Kizan. Um, there is actually one piece of advice that I heard when I was looking into the how to do the FTKs is that you should, if you're going to play the FTK, you should do the FTK game one and game two and three, you should try to actually build a board of interactions because your opponent might try to side more stuff to stop the FTK. So yeah, Axel Synchro and Dissipator could be really strong. And both of these should be in the Megatons by the time October rolls around. So these should be a lot more for like you don't need to buy these now you can wait until october um cold breaker virus swordsman right so if you can't afford the sp this card basically does the same thing sp little knight should be in the mega tins as well so it should be more affordable by the time october rolls around assuming it doesn't get ban um absolutely banned on the list so we'll see but yeah worst case scenario you can still use cold breaker virus swordsman in this line. So Kizuru, as I mentioned in the previous combo, 
it's really just not that good in the list unless MX Saber Invoker comes out. So if Invoker comes back off the list, that means that a single Terra Top or even a Tour Guide could go Summon Invoker, Summon Kizuru from deck, Kizuru Effect, Search Anarchist. And that's good because Searching Anarchist basically gives us full combo because uh, we have to go like Battle Shogun. And because MX Saber Invoker is a warrior, we can use the uh, Invoker as link material. It actually works out pretty well. So this is only good if MX Saber Invoker comes off the list. So you're kind of taking a gamble if you bought this card now. I thought Anishi was going to be good using this new support, but the more I tested it, the more it just seems like if you don't want to do the FDK, then you can have, you can probably find space for it with the red blue loop, right? Cause you'll be able to get like unlimited counters and then you'll be able to summon out Anishi from hand using a Sarayuja. You don't have to use Anishi, but like it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent tech card. Legendary Secret of Six Samurai. I didn't realize this card only worked with the Secret Six Sams. I thought this was any Six Samurai monster. So I was, so I had it in the list initially because it's a good asceticism target for uh, Anarchist. But I mean, otherwise this card kind of doesn't do anything. So it's kind of just, it's kind of just there. Uh, I guess Spirit could be a good asceticism target for Anarchist because Spirit's level three, Anarchist level three make your uh, Klesha, but I don't think it's strong enough. Now that being said, again, as I mentioned with Kageki, we really don't have many normal summons. Most of our monsters summon themselves from hand. Like we have 10 monsters that summon themselves from hand and four ways to search them. So we have 14 extenders in the deck. We It, it, it won't really hurt us if we put Spirit in, if I'm being real, but it also wouldn't help us much either. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I'm on the fence about it. I don't, I don't think I need it. Squire, as you guys saw, Squire is here. If you want to use Nature Beast, just tuck in a copy of Squire. Unfortunately, Fuma is a wind. I guess you can make a line where you go Reprodocus with Fuma if you want to go that far to make it an Earth, because that also seems possible. I think the Reprodocus stuff sounds better, but like you, you may need to take out like Link Spider, so you, you may need to open a line into Klesha so that you don't get nibbed. Or, or you can take out Apo. I get like Apo really doesn't matter if you're not like if you're going for FTK, you really don't need Apo. So I guess that that's something you could take out. I guess Apo is technically a flex spot for the FTK variant. But if you're on non FTK variant or if you're past game one or you're going second, I think Apo should stay in the list. And then uh, we have Hatsume and Anishi, which I do believe Hatsume is more of a win more card but it's still not bad to play. And same thing for Anishi, it feels like win more, or for going second, you could side it in, but I don't think it's a staple in the deck by any means. Um, but I, I do see like maybe for going second, you could put these two in, maybe take out Chamberlain and Link Spider, put in like Hatsume and Anishi, or you take out like Link Spider, put in um, Naturia Beast and the Reprodocus. Yeah, like you put in the Reprodocus and the Naturia Beast so that you can use Fuma. But that's that's neither here nor there. That's that's all personal preference. I feel like my work here is done. Um, most of the other six Samurai cards I don't think are worth playing. Everything that you need is in these first 26 or so cards. And then these two are searchable, so 28. I guess you could say that you need Yuriza uh, with the asceticism stuff but I'm not too sure on that yet. I do I do think like it's the best way to get um, an extender off of Battle Shogun, but it's also not perfect either. So yeah. And then Chamberlain, I really like with the Link Spider stuff. It just seems really spicy. You also don't care if you draw him. You have so many extenders that like drawing these guys, or at least drawing him and Kageki are fine. Drawing Yuriza could kind of hurt because if you do, then you can't, you can't asceticism into it, so you may need to go a different line, but with the number of extenders you have in deck, that may not be an issue, so we'll see. Otherwise, I guess I could show you guys some numbers here. So in a 40 card deck, we have 26 cards that basically help us with our line that we want to draw into, and we need at least three of them. Now, it's not a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of like, any three cards is what we would need, but it's just about any three. And in some cases, it doesn't matter if we draw duplicates. 
So like, for example, it doesn't matter if we draw a duplicate smoke signal, double keys on plus instructor or anarchist monk or plus dojo or plus gateway or plus united. But I guess with united, it would be a little tougher, but we would basically make battle shogun first and then battle shogun would hopefully be able to get us to where we need to go. And then we have like Rota plus smoke signal. We should have access to anarchist and slash or instructor in every hand, but it won't be perfect. I'm not too sure if like 26 is a number. You could technically say 27 because of Chamberlain. We don't want to draw Eureza, so it can't be 28. And we also don't want to draw these two. It's not that these would be bad to draw. It's just we would rather search them. So that's like 27 cards out of 40 that we don't mind drawing three of. And we don't have too many duplicates. A little over 80 if we're if duplicates didn't matter. But because duplicates do matter, then I think it, it may be closer to like 70. I think saying like 70% chance, like a seven out of 10 chance of opening the three card combo, I think is a fair number to say. Like as long as it's just one normal summon, which these, this is our row of normal summons, one normal summon, one spell and one extender, I think regardless of what spell or extender it is, should be fine for the most part. Or maybe, maybe if we do it like this, let's just say like this, like one normal summon, one either a keys on or spell card and then one instructor or anarchist monk or smoke signal or rota i think that's a more balanced way to say it it's more like a coin flip but like that that's the thing though it's like drawing duplicates of some of these of like this top row like drawing duplicates of like smoke signal doesn't matter or drawing duplicates between like smoke signal and rota doesn't matter so it's a bit hard to calculate perfectly but I do think like 60 to 70, like somewhere between 50 to 70% chance that you're opening it just to have access to engine, 80% chance. And then out of the first row, wait, hold on. The first row, that's like 10 cards, getting two of them. So it's like a almost 40, uh, three out of 10 hands, you'll get the combo line with uh, with like just, just these two. So you'll get a guaranteed FTK, like one out of three hands. And then you also have like the seven, the five to six or seven out of 10 chance to draw like three cards out of this. The numbers aren't perfect, right? Because I'm not too sure how to calculate this exactly, but I know that it works. This has been the new six Samurai stuff. I'm excited to see what this, what else this, this stuff can do. It seems like there's a lot more that the deck can do that I, have and it feels like I'm only scratching the surface. So if you guys, discovered anything with six samurai or if you have any other interesting ideas or opinions let me know in the comment section below this has been your boy niestro here i know i've been gone for a while and i will be gone for even longer because smt5 vengeance is about to come out tonight and uh once i finish editing this video that's that's going to be my whole weekend smt5 <laughs> vengeance i'll be streaming it on my gaming channel link in the description so uh if you guys want to watch um you know pull up and uh let's have ourselves a, a great time but uh otherwise it's been your boy nisha here signing out peace